Shalom, brothers and sisters. Shalom. Shalom. Shall I say? Um, hey, first and foremost, I want to turn to the east and give all honors and praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rekakadash. I want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone for bringing out the 100% truth and keeping it real. Salutation to the 144 hopeful elect of Israel who's pushing his word in all truth and sincerity. And one third of Israel who believe in the word and follow the land wherever you go. Shalom, everyone. So, uh, hey, y'all, through the spirit, we got this little epistle here. Um, and I, I, I think uh, in the spirit, you know, just name it. Train up a child, okay? And uh, it it started off, you know. I wanted to dedicate it to uh, to one in my life, my little one here, that's just about to come of age, okay? Um, so I I put this epistle together for him, really, but at the same time, it's for all of us. All of the brethren, all the sisters and brothers out there, um, and I hopefully this epistle will be edifying, you know, and we can all get get something out of it. Okay, so I think it's gonna be just called "Train Up a Child." Simple as that. Um, and we're gonna go to the book of Proverbs, you know, uh, it's, it, you know, because it's a special time. Uh, we understand, you know, when a child becomes the age of twelve, a young man, he becomes a young man at that time. You know, we no longer uh, do childish things. We, we put away childish things and become more of a young man, okay? And we know that a young lady is, uh, you know, considered a young lady when she gets her, uh, her cycle, her menstrual cycle. Uh, and that's based off, all of that's based off the of scriptures. So, we're going to go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 22, verse 6. It says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Okay, and this is very, 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 very important. Because this is this is it. This is all we are. This is who we are. Um, now, I also want to bring out that this time we don't we don't do things like the rest of the world here. You know, when we come back to the understanding that we are, in fact, the Lost 12 tribes of Israel, the hero, Hebrew Israelites, the Lord's chosen people. All right, He's given us straight commandments uh, not to do certain things. And we know uh, from the book of Genesis, you know, chapter 40, verse 20, uh, Pharaoh celebrated his birthday. Uh, there's King Her Her Herodias. And, uh, you can read about him in the book of Matthew, chapter 14, verse 6. He started celebrating his birthday, and it clearly says, "Learn not the ways of the heathen, all right, and choose none of their ways. Don't follow their, uh, don't envy thy oppressor. You know, choose none of their ways. Uh, things like that. And if we go to the book of, um, I think it's Leviticus. Hold on, brothers. Almost there. Okay. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 3. It says, let's, let's start at 1. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 1. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, I am the Lord their God. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwell, shall ye not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whether I bring ye, shall ye not do. Neither shall you walk in their ordinance. Okay? You should do all my judgments and keep my ordinance to walk therein. I am Yahweh Shem Ashai, I am the Lord your God, right? And then we go back over to the book of Job. I'm just bringing it out right here about, hey man, you're not supposed to be really celebrating no birthdays, you know, um, 
because it's like a form of idolatry. You can you kind of put yourself up on a pedestal like you, you know, you're somebody. But every day, you should be giving thanks to Yahweh Hashem Shai, you know, for waking us up and, and allowing us to go on. Especially with the, with the, you know, with that with that mind and understanding that you know who we are. We still have the Lord's name. It's a very very special, you know, because um, you know the rest of Israel are, is blinded to these things, you know. So. It's very, very special, brothers and sisters. You know, this just it's it's one is one on one. You know what I'm talking about? Every day is a special day. You don't need no like I always say, you don't need to follow the ways of the heathen. You don't need the heathen uh these crackers to tell you, you know, to, to celebrate this day or celebrate that day or be happy on this day or give your mom and your dad, you know, gifts and presents on this day because it's so called Mother's Day or, you know, Father's Day. Or, you know, a Christmas, give somebody a present. No. If you love somebody, you, you always want to be good for to them, right? So look, this is the book of Job, chapter 1, verse 1. There was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared Yahweh Hashem and Ashai, and eschewed evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she asses and a very great household. So that this man was the greatest of all the men in the, of the east. So the Lord blessed Job, man. Okay? And his sons went and feasted in their houses, every one his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and drink with them. And it was so. When the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and, sac and sacrificed them, and rose up early in the morning, and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned, and cursed Yahweh Shemel Shai in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. So, you know, he was a good, just man, but he had some... Uh, some wicked, wicked ass children, you know, and that happens, and that's why, uh, you know. But he still, he prayed for these people, you know, because uh, they were his children. So you still, uh, and he he understands the the wrath of the Lord. So he made sacrifices for their sins, you know, because they weren't, they just wouldn't do the right thing, man. Um. So you know, I've I've taught my kids, hey. You know, to the best of my ability, because, of course, we're under the curses, and we're in this wicked society where they definitely want to break up the households and all that stuff, which they have succeeded in those things. You know, not everybody has a perfect, you know, that, that lifestyle of being with their family. So some of us have been broken up, and that's just the way it is. Um, but at the same time, so we try to, you know, encourage and raise our kids the best we can. With what we got they're not under our rooftop so you can't uh, always be there and and um, you know make sure that they're doing the right thing because they're being governed by the woman now you know what I'm talking about which does everything that Esau says unless she's a, a one that has come back into the understanding that hey this you know that's not the way to be let's continue on y'all with the, with the scriptures okay but I just want to bring that point across about hey Uh, we're not supposed to be celebrating no per birthdays and all that kind of stuff at this particular, you know, this, you know, because it's the ways of the heathen. All right, so one more time, we're going to read this Proverbs 22, then we're going to move on. So Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from him. All right, now, I want to also bring that out because at this time, we're actually children. All right, so these epistles, we're training each other, bringing each other up through the word, getting baptized through the word and the power of Yahweh Shai. All right, uh, let's go to the book of John, chapter 3, verse 3. John, chapter 3, verse 3. Yahweh answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of Yahweh Shai. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Yahweh shall answer, Verily, verily, I say unto, unto you, 
unto thee. Except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And now, you know, right now we, we have been reborn, man, by the renewing of our mind, okay? By uh, turning uh, away from this wicked world and the way they, they had to try to program us to think, you know, to be an antichrist. But now we've come back to Yahweh Shem Hashem, man, and we have been reborn. And it's a beautiful thing. Let's continue all. We're going to go to the book of 1 Peter, chapter 1, verse 23. Well, let's start at 22. First Peter chapter 1, verse 22. Sin ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto un unfringed, unfeigned love of, of the brethren. See that ye love one another with a pure heart, fervent, fer fervently, okay? Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. By the word of of Yahweh Hashim Hashai, which liveth and abideth forever. Okay? For all flesh is grass, and all the glory of man is as flower of, gra of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Okay? So through this, these words, man, the words of Yahweh Hashim Hashai, you know, are we being reborn? You know? Uh, it, it, it's nice, man. You see me smiling. Because I, I love it, man. I love the word. And let's let's keep on down to uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. Verse 1. Uh, chapter 2, verse 1. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, right? As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow where but thereby. If so, be ye have trust tasted that the Lord is gracious, man. And the Lord has granted us this mercy to open up our eyes so we can see and understand these things. Okay? Like I said before, Romans chapter 11 and 7. What then? Has Israel uh, received what is seeking for? And I'm roughly paraphrasing. The election have obtained it, but the rest were blinded. Okay? So, you know. As newborn babes, we desire the sincere milk of the word, that we may grow whereby. And that goes right back, train up a child, man. You know what I'm saying? Always correcting a child. Hey, this is the way. That's not the way. Uh, don't think like that no more, man. You know, let's, we, we, we're going this way, all right? We're going this way. This is the way you should go, baby. Listen, listen, listen to, listen to you. How about Shema Shot? All right? This is the truth. Uh, this is it. This is our heritage. This is who we really are. You know, turn away from this wicked world. So that's what we're constantly telling each other and bringing out these scriptures to, to train us up in this way that we should be walking in, okay? And it goes out to all the young the young ones out there, the, the, the young men that's just turning a certain age, they're 12 years old. You know, the young ladies that's just coming on their menstrual cycle as well. Now you're now you're young ladies. All right? Um, start to change. It's time to start changing and thinking differently. Okay? And let's uh, go to the book of Judges real quick. Uh-huh. Yeah, here we go. Judges chapter 5, verse 11. It says, they that are delivered from the noise of archers in the places of drawing water, which is here, Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America, the place of uh, the transatlantic slave trade, there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord, even the righteous acts toward the inhabitants of his villages in Israel. Then shall the people of the Lord go down to the gates. Okay? So right now we're rehearsing the righteous acts. We know that we're still just filthy rags, you know, uh, that we're in these chains of darkness, this, these fleshly bodies. Um, but we're rehearsing the righteous acts, man, to the best of our abilities. We're coming back to the law, statutes, commandments. You know what I'm saying? Doing it, doing it as best that we, as we can, what the Lord has given us, you know. 
And that's going to lead us to uh, Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16, real quick. Thus said the Lord, Stand ye in the way, in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths, man. Where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. Okay? It goes on to say, but they, sh um, it goes on to say, but they said, we will not walk therein. They're not going to walk therein, but we're going to walk therein, right? We're going to ask for the old paths, and that's what we're doing now. By me making this epistle, um, trying to train, train, train up a child, the best of my abilities, you know, the way he should, he should go, young man. Young lady, us, brothers, sisters, you know what I'm saying? And we know these things, but it's good to, uh, we have to, this is our job, to continue to bring these things out, you know what I'm talking about? And continue, because this is a part of it, to, re to, to be reminded, to, okay, and oh, wow, look, look at the spirit, man, let's go to 2 Peter, again, Second Peter, chapter three, verse one. It says, "This second epistle, beloved, uh, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, man. So we stir up the pure minds by way of remembrance." That ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets. And of the commandments of us apostles of the Lord and Savior. Okay. So we, you know, by these words we, we, we understand what's about to happen. What has happened in the past. What's happening right now. Because what is it going to say? Knowing this first that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after the, their own lust. And we know these things and we, we see them and we're understanding and uh, that's just a part of prophecy, right? Like, uh, and I want to bring this out too. The other day at camp, I did say, you know, the prophecies are being fulfilled, even the little ones. But my friend, there's, I want to, you know, pull that back a little bit. There's no such thing as a little prophecy because all must be fulfilled, right? Uh, and when I was saying, when I was talking about that, I was really talking about um, the prophecy of scoffers, of of, of uh, false prophets as well. You know, because right now this, this week, last all last week, uh, the Spirit had us bring out and, and uh, getting down on IUIC and all these other camps that's with these false doctrines, man, these wayward doctrines about you know the name of the Lord, all you know all along. So. You know, these are prophecies that's been fulfilled right in front of our very eyes as well, you know. So, it's no, I'm so lucky about saying that. There's no such thing as a small prophecy, okay. Uh, yeah, because they all, they all have their purpose. Now we're going to jump over to um, Revelations. Chapter 18, verse 4. I better, I got to reset this camera as well. I'm just going to do it now. Okay. Revelation chapter 18 verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. Okay? That ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Alright? And that's that's uh, training up a child as well. Hey, we're, 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 we're not to be like that anymore, people. We're coming out of this mindset. That we're and this 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 message is going out to the 144 hopeful elect and the one third of Israel, the so-called Negro, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. Okay, so we're coming out of this thinking of Babylon the Great, what they have tr tried to train us and tried to uh, teach us to go against the scriptures, man. Try to teach us to celebrate these birthdays. They try to teach us to celebrate these pagan holidays and be become one of them. Okay, like they always did in the past. You know what I'm saying? T telling us that we're uh, a proverb and a bride word, which is we're under the curses, you know, but not telling us that we're the Israelites, but telling us that we're so-called Negro, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, but not the lost 12 tribes of Israel. So we're supposed to come out of all that. All right? We're coming out of there, my people. We're, we're not a part of this world. Okay? 
Simple as that. So we not be partakers of her plagues. So we're training up ourselves, you know, as the scripture commanded us to. You know, actually how about Shema Shah has uh has spoken about these things that we're the children of Israel were gonna wake up, you know, and come out of it, come out of this way, man. Let's continue on, y'all. I'm gonna go back to uh, I'm gonna hold, I wanna hold uh, I think I'm gonna hold Peter. We're gonna go back to uh, Matthew here. Uh huh. 24 verse 36. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. Okay? Hey, brothers, also, hey, amen. The other night, I was visited by an angel, man. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And you know, if y'all ever, if it ever happened to you, you know, they always come up on you, you know. This particular one I gave it to, I gave a ride to, and they always come up as if they don't know nothing about the scriptures, right? And then, uh, most of the time, you 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 get a, you get the you get you get like a feeling after they leave, You're like, could there have been an angel? But now it's happened to me. I think at least three times, at least, uh, you know, I think this this might have been the third time. So, while we were talking, it all, it came up on me, like, I knew it, dude. I'm like, I just all of a sudden became aware, you know what I'm saying? And that's when I stopped, I was, because I was trying to teach him uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 3. That's when it all became aware, man. And at that time, I stopped teaching him, and we just started talking, right? And uh, I said, uh, it was just, it was just really, it was just really cool, um, because he started actually telling me, telling me things, and I stopped, I, I stopped teaching because I, I just knew at that moment that he was an angel. Man. And then, um, so I was, I felt like I had to ask, ask him something. The only thing I asked him, I said, you know, was about the scriptures. And I said, uh, so if we need to know anything, just, just pray, just pray to the Lord about it. You know, about the scriptures. If, if I, if I ever have any problem with the scriptures or anything, ask the Lord, like we always do. And then there's a brother that's going to bring out an epistle or something about it, you know, um, and then I sat there for just a, a quick second, and I thought, and I was trying to raise my mind, see if there's anything else I needed, to, I, you know, to ask him. And I thought back on all the scriptures, and I was like, well, we we kind of already know. We we had the prophecies, we had the understanding, and um, that that was it. I was like, okay, you know, because I didn't have to ask him nothing. And he said. Uh, you know, because I think at the time I was down in the spirit. He said that I was doing a good job and just and just keep it up, just keep it up. And uh, it brought me it brought me a comfort and, and hope, man. I was like, thanks, brother. And, and I hugged him, man. <laughs> I hugged him, and he got out and he walked off. I didn't even watch to see where he was going. Nothing like that, because he was in a dark wooded area anyway. And I was just sitting there, kind of like, wow. You know, wow, like that, man. So, I just, I just had to bring that out, man, because of, I think because of this right here. Because of what he said also at the end. You know how angels are. You know how these dudes are. They, man, they be tripping. They be, sometimes, because he said at the end, um, I don't know how why he said that, but he said, I think it's just to ease me from being so anxious and everything. Just to, just to continue on doing the work, Right? Because he said the Lord not coming to like 30 or 40 years from now. Or some, some way off the wall stop, something like that, right? But we know that's not true. And that, this scripture right here compelled me to bring out that story. Because I didn't know if I was going to really uh, put it out there like that. I didn't know if I was going to, you know, publish it, you know. But this, because of this scripture, it compelled me to bring it out. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but... But my father only. These are the words that Yahweh shy, saying, "Hey, nobody don't know. I don't know. The angels don't know. Only Yahweh knows." 
But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So just like 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 we've been bringing out, everybody's doing their own thing. Everybody trying to continue to build up this nation, even through this mass, you know, and all this stuff. They they just going on about their business, like ain't nothing happening. These are the signs of the times, letting us know that these things, you know, is right right there at the door, man. Huh? Because that's what the scriptures say. That's why it's, it's funny that he said that nobody, you know, because hey, it don't matter. And that's what and that's what this epistle is really leading into as well. Just continue doing the work. Don't worry about nothing. Just fear the Lord and continue to do, and stay on that path of righteousness, brothers and sisters, okay? Uh, we're going to jump over to Matthew. So that's all I want to bring out. But of that day and hour, no, no man, no, not the angel of heaven, but not the, but my, but my father only, okay? And that's going to jump us over, jump us down, uh, Matthew 24, verse 46. Blessed is the servant whom is his Lord. Salaki. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Okay? And that's what it's really about. So you train up a child the way it's to go. And, you know, the child going to continue on in that way. And that is their life. That's what they do. You know what I'm saying? That's what we do. We're not one foot in the world over here, and over here we, over you know, trying to be in the truth over here. No, this is it for us, okay? And that's why this scripture right here very important. Blessed is that servant whom is his lord, whom his lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing, okay? Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods, okay? But if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord, the left is coming. Okay? And shall begin to smite his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunken. Huh? The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him and in an hour that he is not aware of and shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, man. Okay? So the point is, hey, we, we live this truth. We are this truth. We are the Hebrew Israelites. This is our heritage. We are a holy people. Okay? This is the way we live. Period. Okay? We now come back to the law, statute, commandments, to the best of our abilities. We're rehearsing the righteous acts right now. We're doing everything that the Lord has proclaimed us to do. Okay? That's it. You got that. All right, so. Yeah. All right, so let's go back to Revelations. Mm-hmm. Where we at? Okay, good. I'm going to try to wrap it up before the time run out again, okay, y'all? We're going to go back to the book of Revelations. Uh, chapter 12, verse 11, real quick. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives until the death. So, right there, because we're living in this wicked ass world. There ain't nothing going on around here, but but this. You know what I'm saying? Because we're gonna we overcoming this world by the blood of the Lamb, by the mercy of the Lamb. By the mercy of Yahweh, but I was like about my nose again. I told you. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony. Okay? By the words, man. And they love not their lives unto death, man. There ain't nothing going on here. Okay, and that's going to bring us over to Joshua. You know it. Chapter 1, verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. And thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then shalt thou have good success. I have, have, I have not, I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee whatsoever thou goest, man. So... You know, we don't have to worry about nothing. 
We understand the prophecies. We understand uh, who the wicked is, what their agenda is. Um, we understand who we are. We're coming back to our heritage. We're fulfilling prophecy. We're living prophecy. We have faith. We believe. This is Yahweh Hashem Yahshai, God Almighty, who's in control of everything. So all we have to do is stay on this path of righteousness. Play our role, man. Play our role. Stay there and do the job. That's it. Um, and I believe we want to we want to make a quick stop over here, y'all. At uh, I hope I just didn't read that page. Uh, Philippians. Which is 931. Uh, Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. It says, Being confident of this very thing, that he which had begun to work begun a good work and you will perform it until the day of Yahweh Shai okay until the day the Lord returns okay and uh, just one more oh look I didn't have to hold that okay I'm gonna go to Isaiah we're about to wrap this up right now brothers and sisters we're gonna go to Isaiah Chapter 52. And man, this thing came to me uh, this, because, you know, this, the spirit was on me this morning. I woke up late, early, early, early this morning. And I now I keep a notepad by the bad bed, man. And it, 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 the spirit was on me, man. I just started writing it down. And then afterwards, this scripture soaking, soaked inside and I started meditating on it. Awake, awake, put on thy strength. O Zion. So we done walking back to the fact that we are the Lord's chosen people. We're putting on the strength. You know, the, the Lord's name is a strong tower and, you know, the, the, the righteous run up in there, you know. We're putting on our strength, man. Put on this, this understanding that the Lord, who, if the Lord be with us, who can be against us, man? You know what I'm saying? Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come unto thee the uncircumcision and unclean, right? Shake thyself from the dust, arise, and sit down, O Jerusalem. So look, we're putting on these beautiful garments, man. This understanding. We're meditating the scriptures day and night. You know what I'm saying? We, we're putting on these beautiful garments. And I thought, wow, that's, that's beautiful. Because just the other day I was talking about, um, when I brought out that epistle about, when the Lord comes back, He's going to judge those, uh, He's, in, in, that's dressed in strange apparel, you know, with the with the spotted garments, man. You know what I'm saying? All right, so uh, we're gonna go to Deuteronomy chapter four, verse five, and th and this goes comes all the way back around. All right, this comes all the way back around to train up a child. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 5 Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments even as Yahweh Shema Shai, my God commanded me that ye should do so in the land whether ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations which shall hear all these statutes and say Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great? Who hath God so nigh to them as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for. Okay? And what nation is there so great that have statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day? Okay? And we might as well finish this off right here because it's going to tell you right here. Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, right? Least thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen. So practice these things. Meditate on them day and night. And least they depart from thy heart for all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons, man. Keep them going in your generations. Hey, this is this the way our forefathers did it. This is the way we're doing it. We are the Lord's chosen people. This is who we are. This is our heritage, man. Okay? 
Now, I, I was, I, I put this on here. I didn't know if I was gonna use it or not, but I am gonna use it because that last scripture was perfect. I, we could have wrapped it up right there, okay? But this here, I gotta say it, and this, this one, this little piece here is going out for um, these other camps out here, man, who still uh, listening to these other uh, wayward doctrines. You know, Great Millstone has the 100% truth. Great Millstone is the body. The Lord says, come under one accord. Okay, and this is another one more warning. Okay, let's go to the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 3. That's why I'm so glad the Lord brought me over to Great Millstone, man. Because ain't nobody, we, look, we done woke up to the truth. Why would you go somewhere else, man? I mean, why would you not come to the full? This is the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in your house, shy. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For his throat you were not able to bear it. Neither yet now are you able. Okay? For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envy and strife and divisions, are you not are ye not carnal and walk as men? Because remember, you remember IESUP case coming up there, I think with Philadelphia standing up behind the other man. Talking about they, they, they blocked and stuff. All oh, these carnal thing, man. Everybody talking about uh, Great Millstone, you know, uh, slandering the name. With Great Millstone only coming out with 100% truth, man. Telling y'all what time it is. Telling you uh, with 100% doctrine of the, uh, through the spirit and the power of Yahweh about Shimon Shai. Check out the last part. For I... For while one said, I am of Paul, and another, I am Apollos, are ye not yet carnal? Right? Because what? There's one truth, one way, one faith. Great Millstone has 100% truth, man. That's it. So, train up a child away as you go, brothers and sisters. And with that, hope this was edifying. I want to uh, thank you, how about Shemal Shai, again. You know, of course. I want to give all honors and praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rekakadash. I want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone for bringing out the 100% truth and keeping it real. Salutations to the 144 hopeful elect of Israel who's pushing his word in all truth and sincerity. And the one third of Israel who believe in the word and follow the land wherever you're going. Shalom is real. It's perfect. It's like, it's about, it's going to stop by itself almost. Shalom.